各位同事，欢迎大家嚟到我哋 Chow 先 Talk。今日二零二四年一月十六号，咁咧就今日超级高兴啊！因为咧揾到大家久违嘅 PC，PC 今日都系上嚟。咁诶呢个礼拜咧已经不停有人问，点解你揾到阿 PC 出山嘅咧？咁<笑>咁其实咧 PC 就。我耐唔中都見下佢啦，落都繼續有聯絡嘅。咁咧就、呃、我就覺得，只要我轉咗地方咧，誒、呃，無論佢想幾多次嚟，佢都會上嘅嚇。咁、啊、誒，一問佢嘅就即刻上嚟啦。咁咧就 PC 咧就吸引咗我哋其他啲好多、呃、久違嘅觀眾喎。咁今日咧喺 studio 嗰度咧就有一個觀眾嚇、啊，就係、是、李偉航。咁即係而家三個 uncle 咧就喺度做呢個 webcast 啊。<笑>咁呢就誒，我就唔想講太多嘢，因為今日呢堂書就應該係非常之精彩嘅。咁呢，我不如留返多啲時間呢，等阿 P.C. 一路講啦，或者完咗之後呢，我哋繼續傾偈。咁呢，我唔嘥咁多時間 ，P.C. 唔需要大家介紹，介紹俾大家啦嚇。即係做過無數誒關於 pediatrics 嘅工作，不過呢，就我有兩樣嘢要多謝佢嘅。第一樣呢，就係係佢呢誒將 N.L.P. 變咗個 mandatory training 誒 in Hong Kong。二零一二年啊 ，P.C. 係，咁咧<笑>就誒呢<咳>、呃這個我諗影響非常之深遠。第二個 personally 咧，我好 grateful to 佢嘅，因為咧就誒、呃、有兩件事。第一件事咧就佢誒即係 introduce 我去誒、呃、做呢個 exam committee， 都一做做咗十幾年。第二咧就大家有啲新嘅同事都唔係好記得嗰陣時係沙士啊。沙士呢，就，我每日都同佢喺電話度講下，即係、哎、大家都未病啊，誒、呃、啲,啲病情係點啊咁樣。咁咧呢幾樣嘢對我都係非常之誒、呃，即係記憶猶新。咁、呃、所以今日見到 PC 就好開心，就係 s 喺個 studio 見到佢。咁咧久違咗 PC 咧，不如我俾個樣大家睇下先嚇<咳>。出鏡啊 PC 啊，<笑>好，交個時間俾 PC。好多謝阿 Bill、呃今次非常非常之榮幸嚟到 c h a r l e s t o n Talk， 誒、嗯、呢、這個係一個好大嘅榮耀，<笑>因為我好少講 talk， 但係咧就今次咧就誒、呃、亦都誒、呃、講翻啦，咁亦都好開心咁去講。咁啊，有幾樣嘢我想講講嘅，就係、是、誒、呃、我聽好多嘅 c h a r l e s t o n Talk。就大部分嘅講者咧都誒好 practical 嘅，講啲 new guidelines 啊、new treatment 啊、etc. etc. 但係好少咧就講到係有誒 research 方面嘅誒 pediatrics 嘅，尤其是係香港 research 方面。我同好多人講過，亦都同阿彪講過咧，就係話 medicine is incomplete without research， 一定要有 research 嘅 component。我亦都希望藉此咧，就係、是、誒、呃、用呢個 talk 嚟 stimulate 下啲 young pediatrician， 等佢哋第日咧都有興趣做研究，因為冇 research 就冇 advance 嘅。所以今次咧個 talk 咧就係、是、discovery of novel and specific biomarkers of NEC。咁不如誒嗱、呃，一陣間阿彪可唔可以誒呢、呃這個係用 bilingual 啊 ，or whatever？ 啊 ，mainly 都係英文啦，英文會誒順暢少少嘅，咁就 OK。Let's start。OK。Now， 嗯、um, ，just a brief disclosure。There is no、uh, conflict of interest to declare。I have to thank、um, Dr. Arthur Liu，、uh, Providence Foundation Limited for supporting the research on plasma mRNA study, and also、uh, the government, the LGC grant for the fecal mRNA study. Now, the content of the whole talk will be divided into two parts. Firstly, is concerning the pathogenesis of NEC in the molecular level, right? So,、uh, a little bit of basic science, not very much. And the second part will go into how do we find specific biomarkers of NEC. The reason why I give this talk is because this study was completed just before COVID and have not been presented 
formally. I've only given one preliminary presentation in an international meeting uh, in Shanghai. And at that time, only a few Hong Kong neonatologists have heard the preliminary finding. I've seen him in all the conferences and attending uh, all update lectures. So, uh, and also the QE team was there. But it is not a complete uh, presentation because the final result was not out. So, two parts molecular pathogenesis as well as diagnosis. So, as you all know, NEC affect about 6 to 14% of very low birth weight infants. Especially preterm infants, they present commonly at about 30 to 32 weeks post-conceptional age. What it means by that is that if you are born 26 weeks, you are most likely to have NEC uh, four weeks to six weeks later. Whereas if you are born at 28 weeks, then you are more likely or most likely to have NDC two to four weeks after birth. Very particular phenomenon. Um, no, nobody quite understand, maybe due to a maturation process. Now, the, the NEC I'm talking about is not the NEC of term infant. It is a completely different categories because for the term NEC or near term NEC, they present in the first few days of life and it's almost exclusively due to ischemia, the hypoxic ischemic bowel. So we are concentrated on the conventional preterm NEC today. Okay, so it induces an acute inflammatory process, giving rise to necrosis of the bowel, especially in the ileum, and also it is associated with high mobility and mortality. The, the powerful, uh, uh, hang on, let me get the pointer. The powerful physiology is rather poorly understood, and it is very complex and multifactorial. But unfortunately, in the past 20 years or 30 years, there's no proven new preventive or treatment strategy available. No significant ones, okay? So uh, yes, people talk about probiotics or whatever, uh, which started in Japan, and then um, the, the Taiwanese carry out a number of uh, uh, RCT and find it to be useful, and uh, the Italians find it to be useful. But when they conduct a multi-center study in the West, then they did not find that to be very significant at all. And also, um, jo Joseph New is one of the um, uh, experts in NEC, also told me that uh, he, in his unit, he wouldn't use uh, probiotics because it will modulate the immunity at a very early stage by, by um, colonizing different type of bacteria in your gut. And we don't know the consequence of that. So uh, he is very cautious. And I think most of the Western uh, units do not use probiotics. And uh, only the uh, Taiwanese or the Japanese are still using it. So the predisposing factor, the main predisposing factor is definitely prematurity um, because the mucosa could be easily injured and they have poor host defense, which um, invite bacterial invasion. So this process when trigger off will go through signal transduction through various important pathways, the AP1 pathway, NF kappa B, et cetera, et cetera, which I will show you in the next slide. It altered infam inflammatory response. This is an extremely potent pro-inflammatory response, including all the, in all, all the uh, interleukins and the TNF alpha, etc. but with very little anti-inflammatory counterbalance. What I mean is that the anti-inflammatory response 
was actually suppressed, suppressing the enzymes. Okay, as a result, you have severe bowel inflammation, necrosis, programmed cell death, and NEC is the final results that we see clinically. So, for the first part, we compare the genome-wide uh, molecular profile of these regulated genes and network in three types of tissues. NEC, SIP, SIP is spontaneous intestinal perforation, and surgical control tissues. What I mean by surgical control tissue is that those who require surgery but without inflammation, like congenital atresia, or intestinal obstruction, or a patient who require culture of ileostomy for whatever reasons, right? So we want to find out what are the difference between these three. Um, sorry. Uh, we, we want to find uh, the, di the difference between these three, a uh, little point on my mother, um, uh, these three uh, entities. So in the NEC tissue, we quantify 52 dysregulated genes in different functional modules. What are the functional modules? I'll show you in the next cartoon. Uh, they involve angiogenesis, arginine metabolism, chemotaxis, matrix modeling, oxidative hypoxic stress, inflammation, and muscle contraction. We, we categorize it in different categories and because they have different pathways. And they act through important receptors like the toll-like receptors, toll-like receptor 2, toll-like receptor 4, and the TRAM1, and mediated through key transcription, uh, transcription factors like the nf cover b AP1, etc. The next Y will show you. Now, don't get mobile or slide hak chan, okay? In fact, it is very simple. So don't bother about the details. The concept is most important. The bacteria will, will um, act through those toll-like receptors, okay, or tram receptors. And they act through very important cell surface. Uh, uh, those are the cell surface, oh, sorry. Those are the cell surface re uh, receptors, the, the, the toll light ones. And they act through important pathways via the transcription factor. The AP1 is an activator protein one complex, nf cover b and also the hypoxia uh, inducible factor 1A, which is Oops, oh, little pointer, which is here, which go to the next network. So, what, what, how is that affected? It basically affected different pathways. It affected the hypoxic pathways, the chemotaxis pathway, angiogenesis, muscle contraction, arginine metabolism, and matrix cellular matrix remodeling pathway. Pathways. There are most of them are pro inflammatory pathways. So we go to the network two. Okay, next slide is a network two. Then through this uh, mediator HIF1A, then we know that it is very pro inflammatory because you know your friends, IL6, um, IL8, all those pro-inflammatory cytokines. So basically, just one conclusion to take home is that this is a very pro-inflammatory situation. So compared with the SIP tissues, spontaneous intestinal perforation, which, except, which exhibit much milder and less diversified expressional changes with the genes, mainly affecting two of them, two pathways muscle contraction and cellular uh, matrix remodelation, okay? It definitely lack significant molecular signal of an inflammation or microbial invasion. So this is lack of uh, bacteria um, invasion and also lack of severe inflammation. 
Okay, so those two diseases, we can conclude, they are, have very different etiologies. Uh, they are very different or dis, uh, very uh, distinguished diseases. Uh, different diseases, I mean, with different pathophysiology. This is the cartoon for the SIP um, related genes in the tissues, mainly affect the G protein family um, and also the matrix. And again, uh, definite absence of a lot of pro-inflammatory cytokines and mediators. So let's move on to the next direction. Now, when we first um, um, started our study, we want a mediator which is organ-specific or disease-specific. We, at that time, there are a lot of reports about microRNA, right, uh, which could be in, an uh, indicator of liver injury or heart injury or brain, brain injury, very specific, uh, just organ-specific mediators. And that's why we are interested in looking at whether there are any miRNA which is specific for the gut. Also, they are rapidly released from tissues into the circulation under stimulation or in a disease process. So we can measure it in blood. And uh, circulating mRNA correlate with the disease severity as well. So the higher the genes are regulated that in the tissues, the more you see the circulating mRNA in the blood. And also, um, this mediator is re resistant to degradation by the enzymes. Now, it is very, very important, especially in the blood and in the stools. The reason is because, yes, a lot of them got released in the circulation, but destroyed within five minutes. Then you will never get that uh, rise. You never catch that rise at all. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, we realized that we can measure it uh, easily by RT-PCR and we can quantify it. We can not just measure it qualitatively, but quantifying it. We we'll give you how many copies per mil or whatever, or per microliter. So this is one which we think is an ideal uh, group which can act as a marker for um, uh, NEC. Now, this um, uh, graph just show you that uh, the NEC here, this is an mRNA expression profile of NEC, surgical controls, and spontaneous intestinal perforation. Okay, we can see that it separated into three very distinct um, diseases or distinct pathways that they go through. And we are confident that if we took the NEC pathways, then we will not be confused with the other uh, diseases involved. So uh, give us a lot more confidence. This is the inter interacting network of miRNA and mRNA pair in NEC. Now, um, again, this is uh, just to indicate that there are a lot of inflammation going on and the pathways, a lot of pathways are involved. Again, it is the same as uh, muscle contraction, angiogenesis, etc., etc. the same pathways, but it gives rise to a lot of mRNAs uh, in the circulation or potentially can give, um, uh, can release a lot of uh, mRNA, especially MIR1290 which you, uh, I will talk about more later on, okay? So again, it signified a very pro-inflammatory circumstances that we are facing and involve a lot of complicated pathways. And as compared to SIP, hardly anything got released into the circulation. Very few, right? So you, 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 you got a few mRNAs here. Yeah, because the pathway involved are very few. So in summary, so this is a, just a brief outline why we use mRNA and uh, uh, for our study 
And with those pathways involved, how are we going to choose which mediator to use as an indicator? We don't want to, to use uh, indicator which have been described before, right? That is, we want to find something new, something novel. Okay, so in summary, what we have is that this is very um, uh, skillfully uh, summarized by Dr. Kaplan from the United States, and he, he gave me this ebook. And what if what if said is that NEC is a disturbance of complex gastrointestinal host defense and immune response that maintain normal physiological balance between the external environment, what's the external environment, the bacteria, the toxin, the antigens, and the internal cellular framework. This, is, I think, is an excellent um, summary of what the situation is. Okay, let's forget about the um, uh, molecular side of things, the basic science of things, and we go to the clinical because we are clinicians. Now, I classify biomarkers of NEC into really three types or three and a half types, basically. The first one are non-specific biomarkers of NEC, like what? Like your CRP, cell surface antigen, CD64, IL6, etc. They are very non-specific pro-inflammatory markers. Right? In CRP, you can find it in septicemia, you can find it even with vaccination, you can find it with traumatized muscles, and obviously a septicemia. And NEC. What it means is that your family have an inflammatory process going on, but it didn't tell you whether it's an infection, didn't tell you it is a, a septicemia, a pneumonia, or um, necrotizing enterocolitis, and that's why I say it's not very specific biomarker uh, of NEC, but a, but a marker of inflammation. The second group are also non-specific biomarkers, but I put the word enhance non-specific biomarkers. The reason is because the reason why it is enhanced is because by virtue of the site of detection, it become a bit more specific. Like you detect calprotectin, which is a non-specific protein, but in stool, in feces. And so it must be coming from the GI tract. And that's why I make it specific, okay? So you have your fecal calprotectin, fecal S100, A12, etc. Those are the protein being leaked into the bowel lumen because of inflammation or damage. Okay? And that's why uh, this marker in feces make it uh, a bit more specific. Later on, we go for the gut-associated protein. Now, this is specific for the gut, right? Or relatively specific for the gut. Because those are the proteins on the mucosa. And somehow, with injury, it was either liberated into the blood on, or excreted in the urine. Now, uh, the previous uh, uh, European groups have uh, studied uh, fatty acid uh, binding proteins, there are two of them. There one of them is the intestinal um, FABP, there's a liver FABP. Those are the different proteins that binds um, in, in, in the mucosa. And then they got released into the circulation or into the urine. And, and also uh, in our study, we have the TFF3. TFF is a T4 a uh, factor free. Okay, the same. They are the uh, gut-associated proteins. Now, the Europeans studied it in the urine and found that they are useful as an indicator of NEC. But I've, I have to remind everybody that urine is not a good medium from experience. 
Because when you have NEC, they gone into renal failure, and you want to collect the urine, they don't think gong the meido. Okay, so that's why urine is not a good one. Second, urine, they are concentrated urine and dilute urines, right? So your concentration or your levels of your marker in urine is not guaranteed. Okay, so. Uh, so we, while we look at the paper that people have done using those uh, associate markers, we try to test it in blood. Yes, we. None of the individual markers are very useful. I can tell you that. But when you combine it together, we come up with a score called a LIT score, L I T score. LIT is a liver F A B P plus your intestinal FABP plus your T4 free factors, when you combine it together, then it's a very good score that you could identify severe cases of NEC, but it did not tell you anything about the mild cases. What do I mean by severe cases? Severe cases are the surgical ones, okay? Or those associated with uh, DIC, okay? <laughs> but not very satisfactory as an early warning marker. Okay, so we said that oh, it is not good enough for us. So why don't we um, go on to the newer methods of uh, diagnostic? We want to find new novel markers. Okay, so what do we do? We use, we make use of the newer molecular diagnostic techniques like the proteinomics or whatever nomics you have, right? Do the microarray and then. For this time, we use miRNA. We want to search in the pool of the miRNA which one could be used as a marker. Okay, but this is much, much more difficult than using the pre-existing known ones. Now, before we go to that, I want to tell you some principles about biomarkers of neonatal infection and NEC. Now, this is very, very important. You have to. Uh, uh, realize why you are doing this and what is the purpose of it. Okay, what constitute a good marker and one what constitute a rubbish marker, right? So you oh sorry, uh, point I was using one night, right? Um, basically, what you want is that you want a marker with a well cut off level to distinguish NEC and non-NEC. The cutoff level should have a sensitivity and negative predictive value about 100%. That means you're not going to miss any single case. But obviously, in this world, there's uh, no perfect marker in life. And also, um, you want to have a high specificity and positive predictive value, okay? So greater than 85%. This is arbitrary set, okay. So, um, so or you may get it from a combination of marker using algorithm or a probability score, right? Um, to get this, uh, to achieve these standards. The ideal marker should guide to initiate treatment. Well, for sepsis, we use the uh, EPO SAA score that we publish in uh, JCI. And um, with that score, we can get 100% of infection cases and initiate antibiotics. And we can also stop antibiotics in about 20% of those after two days, com confidently. Second principle is that you want to diagnose the disease at a very early stage. It's no point that uh, your X-ray already indicates fulminant NEC and you want to use that markers. Marker is a marker. Marker is not for confirmation. Marker is and other parameters uh, uh, facilitating you to make the conclusion that is very likely to be NEC, right? So you want a very early warning marker so we want a marker that is upregulated very early. For infection, we found that CD64, neutrophil CD64, uh, a surface antigen, can be 
upregulated even before clinical manifestation, and we have published that uh, as well. But the problem is that um, we need to have capillary blood every day, but that defeat the purpose of a surveillance. Okay, so the, we we either early stage as a surveillance or diagnose as a clinical in clinical presentation. Uh, what are the early warning markers of infection? In clinical infection, would be the IL six, the precursor of uh, uh, CRP, the IP ten, and also uh, CD sixty four. They are very early warning markers. Okay, good for infection. Then what else constitute an ideal marker? You have to predict the severity of infection. Well, um, we use um, again sequence of markers: uh, anti-inflammatory marker IL10, post-inflammatory marker IL6, and also RENTIs sequentially in a logical manner in an algorithm. And again, we can predict 100% of DIC cases of uh, infection. We are talking about infection here. DI is 100% at the onset of your presentation. Again, it's published a long time ago. Or you can use a marker to differentiate different categories of organisms. Usually you use a gene probe. We have done that, but we unfortunately, we didn't find it to be very useful. Or the marker can diagnose specific disease or specific organ injury. Now we are talking about the NDC type of markers. We want a specific marker just to identify NDC and not infection. Next, you may want the marker to monitor the progress of the disease to guide your treatment. I think, uh, to be honest, I think serial CRP is a good one because the persistent elevation of CRP indicate complications or intra-abdominal abscesses. That means something is still going on if you haven't treated properly. And lastly, you want markers to give you prognosis and mortality. Now that has been done uh, in adults as well as in uh, neonates combining the use of pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory uh, mediators, IO, IO6 to IO10 ratios. Now, apart from that, apart from the clinical properties or targets you want to achieve, there are properties that you have to watch out for the mediators, what I uh, classify as laboratory properties. What it means is that if you have a mediator which is upregulated, but just for five minutes, that is completely useless as a marker. The reason is because you never go to catch that five minutes. Okay, so your mediator have to be upregulated to allow you enough time to measure the uh, to get your specimen and measure it. So, roughly, a window of. 12 to 24 hours would be ideal, okay? So if IL-6, let's for example, IL-6, it come up just for four hours, then you really have a very na narrow window to catch it, okay? And that's why a lot of people use uh, IL-6. Instead, they use the downstream mediator C-reactive protein, right? That's the reason why, okay? Second, the rest are common sense, right? You need a small volume. What I mean by small volume? Small volume means one drop of blood, two drops of blood. That's it, okay? Because we're working on neonates. We want excellent agreement between capillary and venous sample. Obviously, capillary sample is much easier to get than venous sample. If you can uh, have a mediator uh, concentration, uh, virtually the same in capillary and venous blood, that would be excellent, okay? And we have that, and we have proven that in our surveillance study with CD64, right? We, we are not talking about correlation here. We're talking about agreement. Agreement means you go over measurement, hey, capillary blood hai yapa, got level, hey, venous blood to hai yapa, rather than correlation of hai, capillary blood hai sub. 
啊 Venus blood 係一百 ，OK。because 你你跌咗由 Venus blood 跌到十 ，Capillary 都可以跌到落一。In in the sense that yes, there's a perfect correlation, but we don't want that. We want agreement. Okay, that's very important. Next， 呢個呢樣嘢就係最艱難嘅啦，就係 you need to have a machine that you should measure it、uh, automatically. It don't involve human. If you involve human, 你就做唔到噶啦呢樣嘢。就係 for research 得 ，but not for、uh, marketing into into、uh, general use. The the marker must be quantitatively measured because we need the level, the a cut off level. We want to turn around time. What do you mean by turn around time? Is the time when you take your specimen and when you get your results in your hand. That should be less than four to six hours, okay. And also,、um, it can be performed on an ad hoc basis daily. Is no use measuring those uh, uh, interleukins or cytokines, which is measured in batches. Look up a sample, eighty samples in one batch. So, the high key on the, that is, one year later the high key at that time is clinically useless. And obviously, the cost is very important as well. Okay, so those are the clinical properties or the targets you want the markers to do, as well as the、um, laboratory properties. Okay, so what is the aim of a study? Each study should usually have just one aim, right? My single aim is to differentiate NEC and sepsis using specific biomarkers. Now everybody knows this presentation、uh, of NEC. Usually, in the early stage, you have very non-specific, subtle signs and symptoms, poor perfusion, poor, poor perfusion, recurrent apneas, very non-specific, untreated. You go into late signs of bloody stools, bowing aspirin, erythematous abdominal wall, and then if you further delay your treatment. Um, you have complication of bowel necrosis, perforation, peritonitis, septic shock, DIC, and multi-organ failure and death. Every neonatologist has seen that. Oh, this is—I、uh, don't know where you can see it. This is a very good slide of、uh, NEC with、uh, potovenous gas. This is very severe NEC because the, you you need to have enough gas. In the portovenous tract, that means you you have a lot of、uh, bacteria involved, and secondly,、um, there are also intramural gas everywhere. Okay, dilated bowel loop, thickened bowel wall, etc., etc. You name it, it got it right. When I see this X-ray, you don't need the marker. Marker is useless, right? This is your definitive diagnosis. But life is not as easy, as simple as that. You see. So in the early phase, I talk about just the dilated loops or whatever. In the late phase, intramural gas,、uh, football sign or portovenous gas. Now, the Japanese and the Koreans like to use ultrasound scan for diagnosis of NEC is non-invasive. But the problem is that、um, the the guy who did the ultrasound scan. His mentor told me that、um, uh, you have to use a bit of imagination. So, <laughs> so it tells the story, and it is op operator dependent. Obviously, my our、uh, radiologist told me that CT scan, MRI scan are very useful for picking up in intramural gas. But the problem is transporting sick infant to the imaging room is impractical, and it is impossible. To be honest. When you suspect it, you subject it to the MRI or CT scan. CT scan. It is ridiculous. It, it, it just cannot be done, right? Because because the other lab can suspect you, so so we can't do that. Okay. So in the past, what we have done for the um, um, uh, infection mediators, we use a candidate approach. What's the candidate approach? We got known inflammatory mediators, which the adults have used. They, they are known to us. We just do a cohort study to find out its diagnostic utilities, and you use a commercial kit for analysis. Easy. Now, 
they're very different. This time we use a hypothesis-free approach. We don't know which marker we are going to have. We want to find it from the pathways. So you have unknown biomarkers, you need an elaborated study design, and you use your, uh, you need to use the basic scientists to, uh, with the microarray or your, uh, whatever normics you have, to uh, identify uh, the mediators. So this is what we have done. At that time, we used the microarray in the blood to find the miRNA. We divided into four groups. NEC group, septicemic group, gram-positive, gram-negative, septicemia, and the control group. And we find seven mRNA, which is uh, useful, that can differentiate between the groups. And then in the case control study, those are the, those are the case control that is definitely proven NEC and proven gram-negative sepsis, proven gram-positive sepsis. And then we found and we kick out another three, another four, leaving three we think is favorable mRNAs. And this uh, diagram uh, reassure us that the pathway uh, or the, or the mRNA, miRNA array uh, of the NEC in blood is different from those in the gram-negative sepsis and the gram-positive sepsis and the control group. And that's why we know that the mediator we select would be unique for NEC, or relatively unique. So in the case control study, um, seven, we identify seven initially, and then we go to the three. Okay, those are the three. Um, in our preliminary uh, presentation uh, in Shanghai uh, uh, in late 2018, I didn't give the identification, but now I can give it to you now. Okay, so um, it definitely significantly increased in NEC compared with sepsis, about six times. NEC with control cases. However, we also notice one thing. The miRNA level decreased quite quickly from day zero to day one, okay? So you have one opportunity to do it, is that day zero. So this is uh, the diagram. Um, this is NEC, sepsis, uh, controls, etc. cetera. Those, those, are the, um, uh, those, those are the group with uh, no NEC and non-sepsis, but suspected for uh, um, or have uh, sepsis workup being done, okay? So basically, you can see it. MIR1290 is the best one. It's separated between the other groups very, uh, very nicely. This one, yes, it did separate, but there are some overlap, okay? Those are the median interquartile range and 95% uh, confidence interval. Uh, MIR357, similar to this one not as good as the 1290, okay? Um, we always have problem when you have very low levels that you cannot, it's very difficult to, dis, to dis, distinguish between the groups, although it's turned out to be uh, statistically significant, but clinically it's not, use, it's not useful. So what do we have here? Definite figures, MIR 1290, the median level in NEC is 520 okay, copies per microliter. In the other groups, it's 43, 10 folds, okay? So when we compare each um, individual categories, it turned out to be all significant, okay? Hopefully we can differentiate between them. So. At, at the end, we derive an algorithm using MIR1290 with high level, level higher than 650 on day zero, definitely NEC. But however, we missed quite a few of them. But when we combine with the intermediate level, immediate level is between 220 and 650, plus on day one, using a CLP to help us, the CLP level cutoff, I think, is 15.8. Combining the intermediate level 
and the CRP, we are able to have a sensitivity of 83% specificity, very specific, 96% positive, negative, predicti uh, predictive value. Okay, so this is very, very useful when you use this algorithm. That, we, that concerns only two mediators. One of them is a MRI 1290, and the other is just a CRP the next day. So what have we missed? Out of the 36 cases of NEC, right? Initially, we have 30 cases, 36 cases of NEC. 36. The total we have uh, the non NEC and other groups is 260. This is a big cohort study. Take years to complete. We miss six of them. 36, we miss six. But two of them are extremely mild, so mild that one had no tenderness of abdomen, normal CRP, nothing. And another one had intramural gas resolved within eight hours. So the very, very, very mild one, probably we are unable to detect. Secondly, there's one NEC of the stomach that we miss. Okay, no other sites are involved. The more worrying cases, but has been well reported, are the pan necrosis of the bowel. That means when Lei Kim Hong went in, opened it and closed it and said that uh, all the bowels are dead. But somehow, no biomarkers are elevated, not even N uh, CRP or anything. But this is well known somehow. Um, it has been reported by the Italians. I think they reported three or four cases like that. That very prominent NEC, the baby died, but somehow none of the uh, pro-inflammatory markers are raised. We don't know why, okay? And the other two, we probably genuinely miss them. Okay, so the, all the six Ks are accountable. And we also misclassified 10 non-NEC cases to be NEC. Two of them are hematological and malignant conditions, right? But when you look at the MR, uh, any, uh, MRI, uh, sorry, MIR1290, we realize that this is also one, also features in the pathway of a GI malignancy. So we are not surprised that in a malignant condition that uh, this biomarker were also upregulated. Also, interestingly, there are previous and uh, that, that there are cases that we classify wrongly uh, or may not be wrongly are the two previous NGC cases with recurrent intermittent bowel distension. Whether they represent a, a persistent low-grade chronic inflammation, I don't know, and got picked up by our indicators, right? It, it may well be a mild case of NEC, but because it did not satisfy our uh, study criteria, we didn't classify it as such. And there are three cases of septic ileus, okay? Not NEC, but ileus. But having said that, uh, everybody knows that there will be translocation of bacteria in, in septic ileus, right? So the bowel wall actually compromised the bacteria from, from the gut and causing some inflammation in the bowel. So there are reasons for upregulations of these uh, uh, mediators, okay? But more than 650 levels copies, then you're definite NEC here. So limitation of a study, uh, limitations, yes. Uh, without a good, good gold standard, that obviously there are uncertainties in classification. But we, we try to do it as objectively as possible. Okay, set out the criteria beforehand, and we have we sought opinion from a pediatric radiologist with absolutely no, uh, no. Uh, we were absolutely blind to the clinical um, uh, stories. And also all the, all the cases went home fine. So we believe that we have not misclassified too many cases. 
And obviously, everybody writing papers said that oh, this is a single center study and it's not generalizable to uh, other NNUs. Yes, yes, that that's very true. But on the other hand, I cannot see any difference between NEC uh, in the West and NEC uh, in Southeast Asia or in Hong Kong. To be honest. That's why everybody write papers and say that, oh, it hasn't been generalized to another NNU. Uh, or people put it down at, at, at the conclusion that uh, all more study have to be performed. I always comment that if more study have to be performed, then it shouldn't be published. You, you, should, you should get it done first and then publish it. Yeah. So in conclusion, what have we found here? We found specific biomarker for specific organ injury or specific disease. We use a hypothesis-free approach to identify novel biomarkers uh, using MIL-1290. Okay, we diagnosed both medically mild and severe cases, combined it with CRP, we have good diagnostic utilities, and the test used 0.1 mil of plasma, Turnaround time, four to six hours. Ad hoc can be performed at any time, uh, as long as you have a, uh, 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 a technician there. And also, it facilitates early diagnosis of both mild and severe NEC, and giving more confidence, uh, especially nowadays, to transfer your patients uh, to the surgical center. So just one slide on the fecal miRNA. Right? Because feces concentration is not um, standardized. It's not homogeneous in, in, in the feces. Okay? So mRNA will be excreted into the feces, but on the other hand, different piece of feces will contain different concentration. That is the problem. And also, as you know, NEC is a segmental disease. It, is, it doesn't affect the whole bowel all in one go. So the segment that contained the mRNA did not, may not be represented by the segment further on or, or in front. So you have problems. And thirdly, uh, you have problems of uh, ileus after your NGC. Then they stop passing feces. So we did it as a surveillance because it's a non-invasive um, non, uh, type of uh, uh, measurement. But on the other hand, uh, we conclude that we could not, be, we could not find uh, a good marker, although we have some candidates there. But when we did a uh, surveillance study, we have to be honest with our result and, our, and the result we, we quote is that we did not find any good surveillance uh, marker to predict which uh, preterm baby is going to have NEC two weeks later. Okay, so basically a negative study. Very disappointing, but this is life. So in future, well, what is the research direction? Um, I think AI learning is, is very, very important. Integrating in the big data sense of physiological criteria and your biomarker, everything put together, and the AI learn it and sort it out and give you a bio score later on. That may be useful. We are looking, I think the non-specific markers is out. They say it's still useful clinically, but it's not specific enough. We want marker for specific disease, and we want organ-specific marker or disease-specific marker. Daily surveillance is definitely uh, 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 required to be further study um, because you can predict which, can, which baby is going to have NEC a month later, right, or two weeks later. Obviously, if you can develop a bedside point of care test, is marvelous. That means like a uh, dextro sticks, right? That will be fantastic. Where we use the omics approach to delineate more of the molecular pathophysiology and also finding newer markers or newer mediator in the pathways as novel markers. I used to believe in an app that. Um, uh, 
that people using again physiological score and one or two um, uh, uh, mediators and put it together and give you a probability of the disease. I used to believe it, and Americans have done it as well. Then come COVID. COVID, I've seen quite a few papers about COVID of the algorithm of diagnosis of diagnosis of uh, of COVID, but none of them is useful in clinical setting. Okay, so if you tell me that oh that you have a seventy five chance of having NEC, so what does it mean? Eighty five percent chance. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, if if this is your your son, if you have 65 chance, are you going to treat it or not? I don't know. And that's why I, I'm going to move away from the simple algorithm, unfortunately. But the Hoi Leung Sikke data using AI uh, for learning, I think that is the next uh, way forward. For number seven is that in Hong Kong, we haven't got an industrial partner to help us. Because yes, I've done a lot of study on markers and so on. But if we can have an industrial partner that we can uh, measure the mediators automatically, 24 hours a day, right? Then it would be really be useful and we could market it for use in in the clinical setting. So nowadays, a standalone medical school is, um, I think, um, is a feature of the past, to be honest. Medical school next door should be the research institute. And next door, next to the research institute, should be your industrial partners for helping you to make it uh, usable by the patients. I think um, that should be done. In Manchester, they have it. You have a medical school there, and next is a research building. Next to it are their industrial partners who try to make your dream come true and be useful for the patients. Thank you very much. PC, this book is very interesting. 即係匿著個山度啦嚇，就誒<笑>應該都冇乜新嘢。喂，唔係喎，你好好好 update 喎嗱，即係有幾樣嘢。都唔係好 update 嘅呢啲，即係我諗出嚟嘅。生物標記劑、標記物或者生物標誌物，其實即係對 way to go 嘅嚇。呢個第一樣。Yes。嗱，第二樣咧，你個方法去點樣揾佢咧？你個 hypothesis three， 我諗都係好好。好 stimulating 啊！我覺得呢樣嘢，咁其實 AI 就係咁啫。嚇，近時佢哋就有個 hypothesis， 就啊，就證明 hypothesis 啱定唔啱 ，no hypothesis 啊。True。咁但係而家唔係嘅，有 AI 咧就係佢幫你睇下邊啲有 potential。你而家就係用呢、這個。咁第三樣，我諗你 outline 咗一樣嘢咧，就係好重要，就係即係其實就咁做 research。你開頭第一句就話，其實即係 medical school 誒 medicine 冇 research 咧冇用嘅。但係有 research 咧 ，incomplete， 我唔係話冇用，係 incomplete， 係啦，唔得完全。有 research 冇 industry， 都係都係都係都係差好遠嚇。咁但係我我就即係、就是、我同你大大學都教學生啦嚇，新嗰啲學生咧，我發覺有一班學生佢係好中意 research 嘅，係咪？係。咁咧就我諗你呢堂書咧對佢哋好大個啟發。嗱，咁我哋 back to the clinic， 我諗大部分即係、就是、觀眾都係誒。呃 clinical、mm-hmm. 啊，我見到鄭俊輝醫生咁啊，有一個問題，不如答咗鄭醫生先啊。咁咧，哇，好多問題啊，我不如逐個逐個嚟啊。我 copy 咗過嚟先。咁咧，鄭醫生就 ：Is there any genetic predisposition for such exaggerated inflammatory response leading to NEC? Any related genetic marker that might be a 哇，鄭醫生好 updated 喎，發覺。<笑><笑>呢、这個呢、这個真係好多人講嘅，或者睇下 P C 嘅講。Genetic predisposition， 誒、uh, 真係好遺憾，我就唔知道有咩 genetic predisposition。我曾經喺 search for 嗰啲誒誒 literature 嗰陣時咧
就誒、um, 有人講話係有啲 genetic 係 predispose predispose to it， but in some low、um, low impact factor、uh, journal 就係同埋摸零兩可，即係根本佢自己都唔知係咪啊，好似係嗰只專多啲咁樣。Maybe that's true, but on the other hand， 我諗暫時都冇一個好好誒 definitive 話啊。如果你有呢個 genes 咧，你又多咗多咗八成係噶啦咁樣。咁我又唔知啊。但係 the most important factor 呢個係誒、啊、無可置疑嘅，就係、是、prematurity， 就係一個 risk factor 啦。呢、這個就係最重要嘅 predisposing factor。不呢個唔係 genetic factor 嚟嘅呢個嚇。咁、嗯啊、就有人話過㗎。genetic factor 嗰陣，即係 from memory 我 search 嗰陣時，即係誒會唔會就嗰陣時我都想揾啦啊有咩嘢可以即係誒係咪有一 group 人 more predispose 咧咁樣？係揾過呢 literature 係有人講過嘅，但係唔係好 convincing 係嚇，只可以咁樣答。咁誒、呃，我我之前我都抄過嚇，譬如咧，大家如果就咁 Google 得㗎啦嚇，你 John Hopkins 講啲 NEC，、嗯、其實誒頭嗰幾行都有人講過嚇，就話。嗯即係誒、um, ，in neutral 嗰陣時嚟講，<笑>都有啲 market 就啊呢、這個小朋友呢、這個 B B 出嚟咧，可能 N E C 咁樣。嗯嗯、不過好似話真係就唔係好好 convincing 啦。同埋話 genetic 啊嘛 ，genetic 就似乎好似冇乜。係 definite answer 嘅呢個。咁咧，跟住到啊，尹錦明啦，尹醫生。咁咧就 apart from being used to detect N E C in early stage。Can the markers be used alone or in combination with other marker with daily tests to predict disease progression, or used as a guide to arrange timely optimal surgical intervention? 嗱，我我諗咧就 optimal surgical intervention 咧，呢個咧就唔係我哋 design。Unfortunately, from experience 咧就係 surgeon 去 design。誒，佢佢哋話幾時做咁嘅？咁 obviously 佢哋係 based on 佢哋嘅 evidence 同埋佢哋嘅 experience。咁咧就誒嗱，講咗嗰個誒、呃、有冇邊一個係誒誒 optimal 嘅 timely 咧？我諗啊，真係誒、呃、暫時我我我未認識到有 marker 可以話 indicate， 話 indicate 個 severity 咧。Obviously 你個誒、呃，就算你個 M I R 一二九零嗰個 level 咧，都會係有個 indicator 嚟嘅。即係咧，如果你好高嘅咧，你個 inflammatory process 就好緊要。啊，你你呢樣就或者會係啊誒，呢啲全部呢啲 marker 咧係一個 indication 嚟嘅，就唔係話一個誒 definite 啦。你要咁做咁做，即係啊，你個傾向就係咁樣啦，即係傾向係 severe 啦呢個 disease。咁啊，再睇多次條問題先。Apart from being used to detect at early stage, will be used alone or in combination with other markers with daily tests to predict uh, uh, disease progress. 嗱，嗰個 disease progress after 你個 diagnosis 之後咧，或者誒好多時個誒個 progression 咧。of 個 disease 你係咪 treat 得佢好啊？或者有冇即係我我知當初亦都講過有有啲 intra abdominal 嘅 complications 啦。咁嗰啲咧就其實我哋個 unit 慣用咧都係 serial CRP， 因為如果啲 CRP 一唔落或者仲升緊咧，即係話你 inadequately treated 嘅嗰度。係嗱，咁咧就我仲有一個誒、呃，我想有。幾個講先嗱，頭先你一張 slide 咧係講一個 ideal 嘅 market 嗱，嗰張 slide 咧就我想問你嘅同意咧，就睇下我可唔可以誒，即係擺喺誒我哋嘅 YouTube 嘅 description 嗰度。咁咧，因為嗰張比較 busy 係、呃、嗱，因為咧嗰張 slide 誒，其實咧你可以 find 誒，我諗呢張 slide 我唔知係唔係二零一五年 archive 嗰度嘅。即係即係成個 table， 或者俾個 link， 即係我諗你要誒，即係去去 acknowledge 佢哋先得嘅呢個嚇。嗰個 copyright 俾咗佢哋嗱，係一個啊，佢佢叫我寫一個誒
誒，即係嗰啲叫做咩啊？誒 ，summary 啊 ，of 呢樣嘢咁樣嘅，咁咁就好似喺 archive decision childhood new natal fetal new natal， 我諗係二零一五嘅，好啊，係係係呢啲誒 article 裏邊 ，review article 裏邊，我哋試下揾下咁啊，有嘅，有喺入邊嘅，我哋擺個好多係 copy 咯，我哋擺個 link 喺個 description 嗰度嚇，但但係唔好唔好誒誤會，即係所謂嘅 ideal 咧，就係即係其實嗰啲係唔同嘅 marker 有唔同嘅 per。purpose 咁解嘅，即係你唔可以有個 marker 又話 early， 有個又要誒 same marker 又可以做 surveillance， 你個你個 same marker 又可以誒誒做 prognosis， 唔係咁解嘅。即係你你你你要 set out 你個 research project， 你哦今次我淨係睇 prognosis 嘅，咁你就係或者係唔同 come up with a completely different， 因為 prognosis 嘅 marker 就係講 mortality 啊嗰啲嘢，就好即係有啲 severity 啊 link to DIC 啊嗰啲咁樣變咗。咁嗱誒，頭先你講啦誒，都係要好 early 嚇 day one 啊或者 day zero 啊咁樣。咁誒 at the time of presentation。Yes、啊。嗱咁誒，有啲人就講啦，即係就話誒 NEC 咧，其實最 early 嘅 phase 咧就 ideas。嗯、你你有冇睇過即係佢基本都未 present 去 IEC N N E C， 但係佢就 present 去。就係呢個就係好難嘅嘢啦。<笑> N E C 就係即係即係好似我我哋都發現到有三個嘅我哋所謂 wrong 嘅誒 diagnosis， 其實未必係 wrong 嘅，即、就、係、是、有三個 septic ileus，、啊、我哋都 include 咗，即係即係都升咗嘅嗰啲嘢嚇嚇。咁咧就即係誒，即係我我覺得如果你 in doubt， 因為你要咁少嘅血咧。咁你連續嗰兩三日做都冇乜所謂嘅，變咗、嗯。我喺度諗咧，其實我哋真係要好少零點一秒啫嘛，你係嘛 ？plasma 唔係唔係 whole blood plasma， 咁都係好少啦嚇，即係幾滴咯，係咯，即係呢啲小朋友好多時都喺 ward 度，其實喺 NICU 度，你都抽好多血噶啦嚇，你係啊會噶，你你你俾 CPN 啊,啊,啊,啊,啊,啊都唔止啦，嘅呢啲係啊係啊，咁咁你你 predict 即係嗱。我一就當你將來即係即係揾到一個 industrial partner， 嗯，嚇，即係幫你做個 automated 嘅嘅 device、嗯、point of care， 嗯，你會知個將來會唔會即係 part of 好似我哋抽 blood gas 啊？哦，一定會添啊！<笑>即係呢、這個呢、這個 direction 就係去去呢邊嘅，因為而家啲誒所謂啲 device 咧就係誒誒喺個 point of 誒誒。誒、um, point of care 嗰陣時咧，即係喺 bed side 嗰陣時就已經做，但係嗰啲咧就一定要係好高嘅 sensitivity， 因為你唔想 miss case 嘅。好啦，你做到佢真係有嘢啦，咁你就去做一個 definitive 嘅誒 confirmation 啊，或者誒 more elaborated 啊，或者 sophisticated 嘅 blood test 咯，去 confirm 咯，啊，即係呢差唔多一個 screening 咁樣，係好有用。係我做個問題咧，嗱，頭先你提到 plasma。提個 stool， 嗯，提個 urine， 係有冇人諗過譬如 end title whatever 喺喺個 breath 度，係咁嗰個 measure 掹嘅啫喎，嗰、那個唔 measure。係咯，我就係、是、我就係問緊，即係個好難 measure 你個 G R track 啊。因為我我記得試過，即係誒 covid 最早嗰陣時咧，北歐有啲 paper 講咧，就話希望用一啲誒 end title 嘅嘅 marker。去 predict 嗰個人有冇 covid 或者大腦上 covid 係，咁我我知道喺國內都有間公司做呢啲嘢嘅，即係佢咁當然你。I have to say 我我我唔熟呢個 area， 但係 on the other hand covid 點同啊 ？covid 係 pre predominantly a respiratory disease 喎，係嘛？你話你話攞我我哋想想想攞啲氣體啊？誒誒誒，攞啲氣體喺個喺個 gut 嗰度，咁咁就或者誒。呃即係有啲成數啊！喺個骨嗰度攞，都可以諗下。同埋但係個 problem， <笑>有人已經做緊嘅啲叫做啊 volatile 啊嗰啲叫做 VOC volatile 啊，佢哋 publish 咗 paper 嘅話係有用 diagnose for 誒、呃、NGC 嘅，但係咧又係唔 convincing 嘅。你你睇。你睇真嗰張 paper 咧，你就會知道啊 ，significant l y increase 咁就係點啫？你個 cut off 係點啫？咁樣啊，就是、VOC 係一啲係 volatile volatile 嘅嘢，就被即係即係變咗你好難誒 collected in in 啊 in a standardised fashion， 應該咁講嚇。係咁咧，就今日好多謝 PC， 咁咧就嗱，大家都聽到咧就。退而不休啊！其實 PC 咧，唔係唔係，即係、就是、我諗佢係繼續喺度追求，即係啲誒學術啊，同埋啲新領域。
嘅 update 啊咁樣。咁其實我呢堂書我諗有起碼兩個目的嘅，即係第一個目的大家都即係重温下 NEC，which 我諗咧即係好難有啲咩突破住，即係見到佢今日咧都。即、就、係、是、我見好多 institute 都做啲 research， sure, 其實咧即係都未達到頭先你話 early warning markers， 而係喺 bad side 用到嘅。咁、mm-hmm. 但係呢個大家又唔使灰心嘅，即、就、係、是、我諗一路誒誒、mm-hmm. 呃、有時候 AI 咧誒個 progress 會好快嘅。咁、sure, 第二咧、sure. 就其實已經有個方法啦嚇，頭先即係就 PC outline 咗出嚟。其實我哋用嗰個 molecular pathway 嗰度咧。都其實係 computer generated 嘅 pathway 嚟㗎啦，即係以前冇嘅呢啲嘢。你一知道邊度係誒 trigger off 咧，咁佢就即係喺 tissue 嘅 expression 啲 genes express 咧，咁佢就知道即係邊幾個邊幾個 pathway upregulated， 咁就同即係佢 computer generate 同你會誒 mapping up together 嘅。咁呢個已經都好有用噶啦，變做呢個就係正正我諗你第二個信息嘅，即係話俾即係我哋即係誒下一輩嘅 clinician 或者 scientist， 即係佢哋都可以諗下，即係傳統嘅我哋有個 hypothesis， 然後就諗下個 research method。而家可能你真係要諗下用 AI、machine learning， 即係點樣可以即係誒揾到個答案咁。我先嗰幾日咧聽過一堂書咧，就其實係誒阿葉玉蓮。校長啦嚇，講呢個 Alzheimer， 即係嗰日無意中開到呢個明珠台，原來嗰堂書係幾年之前嘅，咁但係聽落都好開心嘅，咁又係即係都係用好多 AI 去去揾個答案咁，咁我諗即係誒我哋嘅 younger generation 可以即係用呢個方向去諗。A A I 有個好處咧，就係即係而家啲誒 data 好多。即係變咗你，你就可以揾 AI 同你 sort out 嗰啲嘢，即係變咗即係即係擺曬落去，等佢 train 佢啊。原來嗰個個 outcome 咪咁，嗰個 outcome 係咁，咁佢就可以集中啲資料啊。原來咁樣咁樣個 combination 就就係最好噶啦，即係即係 for diagnosis 啊咁樣。即係即係個 concept 啫，呢個但係真係要做有好多，即係 integrity 要 sort out 啦，好多嘢。咁所以我我都好佩服你嘅啫，你好佩服我咩？其實你離開咗大學之後咧，<笑>原來你仲好 active， 好 active。咁咧就誒。呃今日好開心啦，揾到你嚟。其實個個都話：咦，點解你揾到 PC 出山嘅？唔<笑>係<笑> ，I'm around all the time。咁 I'm around all the time。就其實就爭個場地啫，係。咁今日咧，我就想 convince 佢，我而家有個好嘅 platform， 好嘅場地。咁咧，希望佢遲啲多啲上嚟。好啊，有機會啊，又好。嗰嗱，其實嗰時咧，我就同佢講話，有個另外一個 topic 我想講嘅，因為。不過而家唔好賣下關子先，唔關呢啲 research 嘢。哦，嗰個唔係嘅，咁種病，嗰個 nothing to do with medicine， 係攞唔到 CME。咁咧，我哋我哋再諗下啲。咁咧，我今日預備咗份禮物，我擺喺台面啊。OK， 嚇，咁一個電話座啦。啊 ，very good， 以為先嚇。哦 ，very good，very good， 好有意思。PC 就真係身體力行，佢做咗咁耐。誒、呃，即係我喺度去身上學到好多嘢，咁呢個以而為先呢，都係佢成日提醒我哋嘅咁今日非常之多謝。